All right, you ever wonder uh, how to get stuff out of Soundtrap and get it into your DAW so you can um, mix it and have control over the individual sounds? Uh, this is kind of for my bandmates, but also for a general audience that probably has something up in Soundtrap and wants to mix it in Pro Tools or Reaper or something like that. I'm going to do this in Reaper. So I kind of break this down into two parts. Uh, the way I get drum machines, percussive stuff, out of um, Soundtrap and the way I get um, like tonal instruments like a keyboard or something out of Soundtrap. So this is for the drum machine. I've got four tracks and each one of them has a drum machine on it. First thing I'm going to do is click on this and get the drum machine name. It's Machines Old School Tape and I'm going to come into Reaper and create this called um, machines old school tape. The reason I'm doing this, and this is going to be a folder. The reason I'm doing this is because if you happen to forget where the drum machine came from, you don't want to go through a million different drum machines in Soundtrap. And this way you can just look at the track and say, oh, it's, it's this particular drum machine. And I'm going to copy, I'm going to copy this and you'll see why in a second. Then we have to go in and we have to export the MIDI. Uh, this only works with the, I think, some of the paid versions. If you don't have the paid version, uh-oh, gonna have to recreate some MIDI. Um, could be a giant pain in the butt. Uh, so anyway, click on these three dots and export this MIDI file. Uh, unfortunately, Soundtrap exports these out as like the same name. So that's why I copy and pasted the machine's old school tape. So grab that and save this. And yes, we will be replacing that. Let's create another track. I'm going to call this MIDI. It's just going to hold the MIDI. Um, because I exported from the beginning of the uh, track and sound, sound trap, you can just hit home. We'll go to the beginning of our session here. And then I'm going to come in here and find the MIDI file. Here it is. And we bring that in. Next, we are going to capture. Now, this is kind of a hack, but see, here's the option. You can export each one of these little pieces of the drum kit, like the hi-hat, the snare, um, the, the kick. You can export them separately. It's going to take so much longer um, to do it. And um, what I prefer is this hack here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to capture the audio stream on my computer. And then all we're going to do is we're going to go into Soundtrap and hit each one of those, um, those pads in the drum kit. And then we'll have the audio. Yeah, it's probably higher quality if you export it as waves, but it's also going to take you literally 20 times as long to do it. And then you have to download all the files and I just think this way is much easier. So one thing you have to do is you have to change your audio device. You need to change your audio um, driver to WASPy, which is already selected here because it turns out that's what I was doing before this. The next thing you want to do is solo this track. If you don't solo this track, it's actually going to capture whatever plays back as you're recording on these tracks. So you don't want that. Hit arm record. There's only going to be two options. You'll get a mono option um, and then a stereo option. Uh, I say pick the stereo because maybe some of these drums are in stereo. Maybe they're not, but you know, who cares? It's, uh, you know, drive space is cheap. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to uh, make sure your record settings are on normal here and uh, you're not looping. So this will look like this and what that means is when you hit record it just starts recording wherever your playhead is so let's pick a spot right here we'll just hit record so now we're recording and whatever we play back here is going to get recorded make sure you're at a good level here i had to crank this all the way up uh, just so i could get uh, peak values of i think it's like negative 10 or something like that it i mean generally you don't want your peaks to be like lower than maybe negative 20. 24 bit digital is pretty forgiving, but you still don't want to have like your, your highest peak to be like negative 25. Okay, so now we're going to go through here. We're going to click on this to edit. 
Uh, we want to see what is actually used in this drum kit. If you just go through the drum kit over here, uh, about a third of this is not being used. So we don't want to mess with that. We only want the stuff that um, is actually being used by the drum kit. So let's hit Edit Notes. And we're just going to click on each one of these. Make sure you leave space. Make sure you leave time for the long decays. Some of this stuff has a very long decay. Let's just zoom in a little bit. And we'll just work our way, way up here. That one, that last one had a really long decay on it. The other thing you should know is if you if you pick up your mouse, you have to keep the mouse clicked down on these until you hear the decay end. If you lift your mouse up, it'll it'll truncate that sound. Um, for example, right? As opposed to. Let's now go back to Reaper, which should have been recording all this. Hit OK. Save all. Uh, let's turn off this uh, you'll find that if you use waspy sometimes things will get incredibly slow um, so let's go back to aco since we're done recording i hope let's center this thing up we know that this was me um, screwing around so we can get rid of this um, let's just trim this down make it a little bit more manageable and just so we can see better, I'm gonna turn off this grid. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Now I have everything kind of set up. I'm gonna turn snap off for now. I have everything kind of set up um, for my slicing to get the type of slices I want. Um, I, what I don't want to happen in here is for there to be automatic crossfades. If there's automatic crossfades, uh, sometimes you get rid of your transient so your attack goes away. So I turned off auto crossfades are, are disabled. Um, otherwise, you will get an automatic crossfade when you slice something. So let's turn that off. And then if you hit D, um, you know, you, there's a couple ways to do this, but I feel like I'm doing it the fastest way. If you hit D, you pull up this dynamic sl uh, split dialog. Um, what I'm looking for here is just these little dashed lines, which tells me that everything, uh, if you hit shift arrow up or arrow down, you can decrease or increase the waveform. So you can see a little bit better here. I definitely don't want that right there. So I'm gonna increase this to maybe like 400 milliseconds. That should take care of it. What this is saying is the minimum slice length will be 400. And when it was trying to slice this twice here, that was less than 400 milliseconds. So now everything looks cool. You know, the other thing that's useful here is, you know, reduce splits, right? Uh, notice I'm doing this at transients. All right, bit of a blunder there. Realize half the windows I was opening up were actually under my webcam window, so you couldn't see them. So let's uh, try this again. Transient detection settings. Uh, notice that I am using zero crossing. Uh, this is why I don't have to do the crossfades because it's it's cutting the the waveform as it crosses the zero line, so no pops or anything like that. Uh, sensitivity here is kind of what it sounds like. Threshold is where it's basically detecting the volume. For example, if you set the threshold, you could probably set the threshold about here, and it would uh, cut cut this transient. But this is going to need a lower threshold because it is a smaller peak. And let's see what we have here. What looks good? This all looks good the way it is. So let's hit split. And now we've got everything split. I'm going to take off this. And I have a macro set up so we can just kind of listen to this stuff one at a time to make sure everything's cool. So let's just go through it. Okay, kind of rushed through that, but uh, you get the point of it. You should probably listen to this stuff, uh, make sure it's it's cut correctly. So one thing I want to emphasize here is the order is super important. Uh, we recorded these uh, chunks in a certain order, and they correspond to the order over here. So you know this is the kick, this this is the kick here, and it moves in sequence up, 
and this is the kick here and it moves sequence this way. If you get things, if you have both of these in order, uh, it'll make things a lot easier. Uh, let's set up our, our sampler. So Reaper comes with a, a really um, easy sampler. That's what we're gonna put on this track. It's called resample So let's make another track. Uh, Rea sample 5000 is what we want. I already have a, a, a preset set up, but let me just go over the stuff that's important here, uh, the crucial stuff, because there's a lot of parameters here. So one thing is you want the minimum volume to be negative infinity. This allows you, as you change the MIDI velocity over here, that will allow the volume to come down. Um, otherwise, you'll just be playing at one volume. So make sure this is at, uh, you know, infinity. This is the specific note that this this sampler will trigger, will only um, respond to one note. And um, since Soundtrap starts your kits, as far as I can see, it starts the, the kits at C1. So the very first sampler you will have will be a C1 note, which is a 36. This is basically the MIDI on a signal and the MIDI off signal. So these both need to be 36, the same note. Uh, zero, at, zero attack, <clears throat> because we already cut these things like perfectly. We don't want to add an attack um, in here. And again, uh, wreck the transient. Oh, and samples, uh, ignore MIDI notes. So this is the mode here, samples, ignore MIDI notes. For basically, this is a drum machine mode. It's not for like a pitched instrument. So that's that's what you want there. Before I forget, and it's very easy to forget this, is I want to, this is where all our MIDI is, right? Um, that's this cluster up here. This is, this is gonna be the, uh, triggering all of our drums. This is going to be sent to every single one of our samplers. So at the end of this, we're gonna have a bunch of samplers. We're gonna have basically like a reassamplomatic uh, track for each one of our drum sounds, which you'll see in a second. But we're gonna send the MIDI to all of them. So I'm going to drag this over here. We're not sending any, there's no audio to be sent from this track. So you can just leave this on and we wanna send all media, all MIDI. So that's cool as well. And uh, again, this is where sequence is really important. So here's how this is gonna go. Now, what I did earlier is I, I went into here and I basically made note of all these MIDI numbers. So I basically went, so here's C1. If you look up in here in this corner, it'll tell you the MIDI note and the number when you click on the key. So this is C1. If you look up in the corner, you'll see that. This is um, C sharp 137. This is the next note, F sharp 142. Again, it's right up here and not right now because I'm, <laughs> but, but when you're over here, when you're actually on the note, that corner will tell you what it is. And what I did is I just wrote it down on a piece of paper because honestly, it's just, that's just the fastest way to do it. And the reason you want to do that is because it just makes it a whole lot easier um, to map these. So I have this piece of paper. I'm going to start with this and I'm just gonna work my way across the drum machine. Um, so I'm gonna click on my resample matic There are two things I'm gonna need to do. I'm gonna need to change the MIDI note and I'm going to have to pick the sample. Like I said, we know that this starts at C1. I guess this is a good time to mention, um, and I don't wanna make a big deal about this, but, but there is a MIDI offset in Reaper. So if you find that you bring your um, Soundtrap notes in here, and instead of reading as a C1, instead of this reading as a C1 down here, it reads as like a C3 or C something that it's not. There is a MIDI octave offset uh, that you can find and right here under MIDI settings, MIDI octave name, display offset. I had to actually set it to negative one so it would match up a Soundtrap. Soundtrap. Working across here, we know this is starting with C1, we just have to pick the audio sample that goes with it. So select the audio sample, hit import from range. Okay. And now you can see that it's actually grabbed that sample from here. That's pretty cool. Now we're going to copy this track. We're going to make a duplicate of it. And this is what I recommend. I recommend 
that you basically set up this first track, make a duplicate, change the parameters, make a duplicate, make a duplicate, make a duplicate. Don't try to create 10 tracks uh, first and then go in and edit the settings. For reasons that you'll discover if you try to do that, the, it's a lot more confusing. Um, <laughs> Uh, so when we duplicated this, we duplicated the routing from this MIDI track. So this, the routing, uh, is is also going to this track. So we don't have to we don't have to reroute. What we do have to do is change this to the next note, uh, the next MIDI note, which happens to be 37. Again, I wrote this down, so I'm just looking at a list, and then we have to change it to the next um, audio item. So notice the shifted over, right? And so we just keep doing this. Uh, we just keep on making a duplicate and going in here, changing it to the next note, which happens to be uh, 42. They're not sequential, or at least they weren't for this. They might not be for you. Just be aware of that. Then just pick the next audio piece. So we just keep doing this. And at the end, we will have a, a full drum kit. I finished this uh, and what you'll end up with, um, I should show you this kind of like trick for, for getting things uh, in the folder that I use. So I, I remember I told you this is gonna be a folder track. So it is a folder track right now. Let me stop making it a folder track. So what I do is I, I grab all these guys. I uh, grab the last one first and then I shift over here and notice that up here I have my machine's old school tape which I deselect and then I just drag these in here there might be another way to do this but I think this is pretty fast so basically all this stuff is in a folder I'm now going to give it a custom color um, and what we have now is we have um, well let's play it back Now, just for, again, for a sanity check, it might be worth going back to the Soundtrap version of this and listening to it and making sure that it sounds the same. I'm not gonna do that right now. But uh, what we have here is we have a MIDI track right here that where we can edit all the MIDI, which is super convenient. You want a place where you can edit, you know, the kick drum and the snare drum and every all the, the drum pieces together. You don't want the stuff on separate tracks. You've, you've got this folder, you've got your MIDI, you've got the audio, which you pulled from this stuff right here. And then you've got all these individual tracks, which you can change the volume on. So you can solo them out. Apparently I soloed out the wrong track here. Let's just get the kick. So now I've got the kick. Not only can I change the volume on it, but I can add any effects I want to it. I can automate it. I can send it out to a reverb or whatever. And this makes it super convenient for mixing. It's too bad that this overall process is such a pain in the ass and I don't recommend it. Not recommended.